Greetings and welcome to World Awake TV. I'm your host, Sky Cubby, and let's talk about detoxing our heavy metals. This is something that you may be doing for health reasons. Maybe you're having neurological issues. Maybe you're having um, nerve issues, but also you may be doing it because uh, we are in preparation for a planetary ascension cycle. Every 26,000 years, the poles shift, the sun goes micronova. We have a lot of uh, data and um, research to back this up. If you look at the work of Dr. Michael Sala and uh, Corey Good, who are just out here in Hawaii, you'll see that um, there's some pretty amazing things going on. If you've been following uh, what Corey Good has been talking about, then you'll know that we don't want to have heavy metals in our system during this great solar flash. So I'm not here to convince you that, uh, you know, we're going to go through a major planetary ascension cycle uh, coming up here in the next, you know, who knows, 10 years maybe, maybe two years. We don't know. But uh, all I know is that I felt a whole lot better when I detoxed myself of uh, heavy metals and I'm going to share some ways to do it uh, very gently. And uh, then we'll talk some more about uh, what's going on this, in our solar system and some real um, things that we've been able to see in our neighboring uh, closest star systems of the same kind of cycle that every planet eventually undergoes for this uh, planetary awakening. But first, how can we detox heavy metals safely and gently. Metals can wreak havoc on our thyroid, our adrenals, uh, different organs in our body. I mean, maybe you have adrenal fatigue or your thyroid uh, it has issues, but um, some people just can't lose weight and it has to do with metals. Other people have skin issues and reproductive issues. It can make our immune system compromised. Children have ADD, ADHD issues, as well as um, older people onset, early onset dementia. And uh, we know that when you don't have aluminum, you don't have cases of Alzheimer's. So there's also arth arthritic conditions related to heavy metals. So congratulations for being here. And we're gonna just dive right into a few of the top ways to cleanse heavy metals and then just focus on a few that really uh, make sense and work. Baking soda we know is a great detoxifier. It's uh, my go-to as a last ditch effort to alkalize my system. You can do a baking soda bomb, maybe, um, not every day, every every maybe a couple times a week, just take a half teaspoon of baking soda uh, in a glass of water and drink it down. And uh, it definitely helps with uh, heavy metals and, and toxins. Chlorella is a colon detoxifier and a pollutant absorber in your intestines as well. And it helps remove mercury, cadmium, lead, and, and arsenic. So uh, chlorella tablets, chlorella powder is just amazing for, uh, for that. And uh, Shilaji, the conqueror of mountains and destroyer of all evils, is the Ayurvedic uh, herb that's actually a mineral pitch that oozes out of the ground in the Himalayas. And uh, if you do Shilaji just a little bit every day, then that humic and fulvic acid in there is going to help pull out the heavy metals and the toxins. Uh, clay and charcoal are probably my favorite that we'll, we'll get in more into um, those later. You can help your liver to detox heavy metals uh, by boiling up a, a tablespoon of milk thistle seed and then simmering it for half an hour to even a few hours to make a uh, tincture of milk thistle. I also like to just chew on the milk thistle seeds and just have them around. And burdock that helps burdock helps keep the blood clean and milk thistle, as well as uh, reishi, are two things that are really great for cleansing the liver. Um, so I'll put a great source for medicinal foods, full spectrum reishi, 
as well as the Living Greens that has the milk thistle seeds in it. It's like a green drink that tastes great. Uh, I'll put those in the links below. You want to get your, your digestive system and your gut health prepared to be able to uh, get out these heavy metals. And soil-based microorganisms like that which is in natto, we make miso soup and add the natto miso, which has high in vitamin K, the X factor nutrient. What the the uh, these good healthy microorganisms do is get rid of heavy metals. Um, there's a few other things that I'll mention real quick. Uh, the, the bone broth is a great way. You know, if you're not vegan, a bone broth is is a really good way to actually hydrate the colon and uh, help remove heavy metals. It's something that you can actually do as a cleanse and take a bone broth cleanse for um, you know uh, a week or even you know four days or so. The bone broth helps to create the glutamic acid along with the cysteine, the glycine, and creating this tripeptide that uh, is basically helps the liver produce um, glutathione which is essential in uh, cleansing out uh, the heavy metals. And if you combine it with the clay um, a couple times a day, just a little bit of um, the bentonite clay is the kind that uh, we use, then uh, in combination with sweating and some of these other things, you know, you're, it's going to be amazing. One of the things a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to heavy metal detoxing is sweating. Get an infrared sauna, get into a local uh, sauna, go out, work in the sun, and sweat because that is a great way to help uh, move the lymph and um, get out uh, uh, heavy metals as well as the toxins. So we're not going to talk about any harsh uh, chelation uh, therapies, just simple uh, ways to cleanse metals that uh, make sense. So here is just a simple thing we do out here in Hawaii to detox aluminum. We get our bamboo, cut the leaves, and boil them in the water. My wife started doing that, and the silica that comes out of the bamboo leaves is a tetrahedron shape that combines with the other tetrahedrons and uh, actually pulls out the specifically the aluminum from the body. However, I have read some studies that show that it can help with other uh, metals as well as, as far as absorption goes. Bamboo leaves is one way to get that silica. There's also a silica supplement called Crystal Energy that was designed by Einstein level genius Dr. Patrick Flanagan who was somewhat of a child prodigy, and he actually wrote uh, the first book on pyramids called Pyramid Power. He figured out how to microcluster silica and create a dual tetrahedron silica molecule that escorts out heavy metals and toxins. And the guy is uh, absolutely brilliant. Designed patents for NASA when he was 12 years old. He wrote a dolphin human communication translator as well as created the neurophone, which allows deaf people to hear through their skin. So imagine listening to a symphony internally. It's amazing. I've experienced it myself. He came out here and checked in uh, with our pyramid um, and told me how to balance the paramagnetic diamagnetic frequencies with a titanium capstone. So the guy is genius, and he studied the Hunzas out in Hunza land to see the secrets of their longevity. And the Hunzas said, you know, many people think that it's our spiritual practices or what we eat, but the main real reason is the water percolating through the uh, glaciers, you know, as, as it comes down the mountain and you're just cruising down for 10,000 years through all these minerals and, uh, you know, through the stream, you end up coming up and you've got all these tiny spherical colloids. And those colloids is what he discovered as the secrets of their longevity. So the crystal energy, what it does is it makes the water wetter and makes it the energy more like spring water. So how does it make the water wetter? Well, it lowers the surface tension so that the water can more easily enter the cells and the waste and toxins can come out of the cells. The cell is a phospholipid bilayer 
So it's got these fats that act as doorways. And that's why you want to eat good fats because it lets in uh, the good fats like that are in cacao and chocolate, uh, macadamia nuts and um, uh, such like that. So when hemp oil, when uh, the fats, you want the, the nutrients to go in the cell, the waste to come out of the cell, and uh, these crystal energy drops, I just put some in my water whenever I think about it. It definitely feels like a higher frequency water. I get that kind of third eye tingle like I do when I drink spring water. So besides that, as well as eating copious amounts of cilantro, you know, a little handful uh, on your salad is plenty. So if you have real metal issues, do consult with your doctor. How do you find out if you have heavy metals? Well, I just got my hair analysis done and I'll add that in the links below and you'll be able to see what you can do, uh, you know, just sending in your hair sample to find out. I found out all of my allergies as well as uh, my metals and my metals test came back, you know, I, I green lighted the, the whole test. So uh, this stuff really works. And, um, you know, I also eat fish locally here in Hawaii. I mean, here I feel like we're blessed with a very clean ocean. And despite what some people say, you know, we've tested the fish and the radiation levels are so negligible. I mean, it's, it's not even registering on the charts of any kind of danger zone. Even I know the EPA raised the levels and such, but um, there's some kind of protection around Hawaii, uh, not just from uh, most of the storms, but uh, the ocean currents as well. And I feel like a lot of that radiation goes out to, unfortunately, California, Alaska. Um, but uh, well, the reality is we're just not finding that uh, high levels of radiation in our fish. Now, one thing I do is to make sure that I'm getting as low levels of um, mercury and heavy metals is I ask when I go to get fish, you know, I spear fish locally and um, I, I hunt for a lot of uh, my own, you know, reef fish and pelagic fish. But when I buy fish, I always ask, what is the size of the ahi? What is the size of the tuna? Because if it's a great big, you know, giant fish, most likely it will have swam out to Japan and uh, picked up a lot of radiation and uh, mercury. So uh, that's why I stick with the smaller tunas. And if you can find out, talk to the pr uh, person who is, um, you know, behind the counter and often they will know. Um, a lot of, unfortunately here in Hawaii, you have to ask, is this local tuna? Because a lot of it, if you don't ask, most likely it is from uh, Japan and, uh, you know, other places. So uh, that's just a little tip for you. You know, um, I was vegan for about eight years and ended up in Alaska and we had just caught king salmon out of the ocean in pristine waters and every cell in my body was like, all right, it's time. You know, we said a prayer with the fish, uh, we thanked it for its sustenance and, um, and it just, uh, you know, I felt the power of the salmon in my body. I believe we're here to eat animal products. Uh, maybe in the future after the earth goes through this major transformation, I could see us not eating animals at that point. But uh, we've been eating animals up until this point for so many millions of years. You know, it's, it's like in our DNA. I've seen too many vegans go, um, you know, start to develop health issues. So I believe it's, it's healthy and, you know, approach the right way. If you can't hunt for your food, at least take some time to, to honor that being for, for its life. And you know, also recognize we, this is the dream land. When we die, we go back to reality. And so in a sense, this is an illusion here and um, everything is growing and everything is evolving. And that fish, according to like the Native American approach is, uh, is transforming, you know, through our bodies as, as we receive it. So um, I think it's good to take a balanced approach sometimes when it comes uh, to, eating animals, but don't be wasteful and don't take it for granted because it is a, you know, a great blessing to be able to um, 
you know, receive uh, that sustenance from something like, like fish. The thing to be aware of is, is the mercury. And I, I know uh, Tony Robbins would eat a, a swordfish steak every day and he developed mercury toxicity. I know people that have eaten too much tuna and they've got mercury toxicity. So just wanted to give you some of these tools to help you um, become aware of, uh, you know, if you're going to eat fish, you know, kind of how to do it appropriately and in moderation. Now there's other ways to detox the mercury and heavy metals from your system. I'm not going to focus too much on these because the others seem to work so well for me. I mean, the dual tetrahedron silica molecule for the uh, crystal energy escorting out heavy metals and toxins, uh, that, that uh, I think is pretty amazing. It acts like a zeolite. So uh, zeolites are kind of uh, found in volcanic material and I've done cleanses with zeolites. It's uh, pretty intense. I personally uh, know a lot of people who, who have had great experiences with zeolites. Uh, for me, the detox was too strong and I didn't really like it very much. Um, I'm all about the, the gentle cleanse, the gentle detox. I do things like uh, colon, liver, gallbladder flushes, and I do think that that can be helpful, um, and I don't think it's too extreme. Uh, definitely, I have to say, consult your doctor before doing something like that. But the reason I bring up um, cleansing with um, enemas and uh, colon hydrotherapy is Part of the detoxing of the heavy metals is uh, keeping a clean GI tract, uh, keeping, um, you know, because things can get bound up in there. So having things like charcoal, um, chlorella, you know, those help to absorb toxins and eliminate them. So those, those can be important as well. And I should definitely mention glutathione. Uh, glutathione is... Um, is one of the best ways to detox things from the body. And uh, there's both the glutathione and the precursor, N-acetylcysteine, N-A-C. So you can work with the precursor, you can work with the, um, the glutathione itself. But I mean, it's pretty amazing stuff. Like in the Petri dish, if you take herpes, you put it in there and it starts growing. If you have glutathione in there to begin with, it won't grow. And then if you add the glutathione in afterwards, it just stops the herpes from growing. So, you know, if you're having uh, cold sores or herpes or things like that, the, the glutathione can help with other things like that as well. Um, mercury is, uh, you know, it can get bound up in the kidneys. So keeping the kidneys flushed as well can, can be really helpful, you know, doing watermelon juice and cucumber juice at separate times in the day, maybe wake up in the morning, juice, uh, blend up some watermelon and uh, you get that sweetness, you get the sugar that goes into the cell, gets burnt up. And then later on, when you kind of want to ground down from all the sugar, the second half of the day, do a cucumber flush with just blending blended cucumbers and drink that cucumber juice for the rest of the day. So that's an awesome one day cleanse that will totally flush your, um, your UT tract, your urinary tract system and your kidneys. So some other things about mercury is it's tied up in our amalgam fillings. Now I'm not gonna say run to your local uh, dentist and get those amalgam fillings <laughs> taken out right now. I mean, I got my amalgams taken out, but I did a lot of research with my cavity healing protocol. Uh, I read Ramiel Nigel's book, Cure Tooth Decay. And I can tell you, he didn't get his amalgam fillings taken out. And he's like one of the best experts I know on um, cavity healing that studied uh, Weston, Dr. Weston Price's uh, material. So before you go and find your holistic dentist and get your amalgams taken out, do some tests. Now I did the hair test. I can tell you, like I said, I green lighted that, but the best way to test for heavy metals, especially mercury, is both hair, blood, and urine tests to get you know full, um, a full screening. 
So, um, you know, I, I do want to do the, the full Monty there, but just, you know, for full disclosure, I only did the hair analysis. Now let's just uh, talk a little bit more about this uh, planetary ascension cycle. And, uh, you know, we're actually entering this giant cloud where there's particles bombarding us that, uh, that we haven't experienced before. And it is literally changing our DNA. So we have the Schumann resonance is the earth frequency and it's the highest, it's peaked at the highest levels um, that, that have ever been recorded off the chart levels. And we're in the solar minimum right now. What happens when it starts to expand? You know, every 26,000 year cycle, the way uh, Corey Good was just explaining it is that it builds up energy that needs to be released. And all the stars are connected and they're, at, at this time of this solar flash, there's a disconnect from the rest of the stars. It builds up a charge and sends this uh, a micronova out, which we just saw a nova happen in our nearest star system, Alpha Centauri. Look, we shouldn't be in fear about this. We can do things to prepare. Obviously, physically with getting the metals out is supposed to help with this transition, but also spiritually, emotionally, you know, it's time to do that uh, inner work. It's time to uh, forgive others in our past, uh, to go deep, to forgive ourselves, to lighten our heart space. I think that is the most important thing that yeah, the, the messages we're getting uh, from uh, our guidance, from our higher selves is saying to, to live a lighter life, to carry a lighter load, to be ready and trust at the time that we will know exactly what we need to do to um, carry on our life uh, on this planet in our body or, or out of our body. But if we are to ascend and transform into a higher light being, which is what the earth is doing right now, the earth is ascending and we are part of the earth. We have to recognize that just as the trees and just as the plants and uh, just as the ocean and all these other beings of occupying infinite amounts of conscious levels here in this and other dimensions, we are part of the earth. And as the earth shifts into a higher frequency, we are shifting into a higher frequency or not. You know, it depends on what you came here to do. I know I came, at the core of my being, I know I came here to help with this planetary ascension cycle. Uh, when I was 10 years old, I remember telling my dad after seeing 2010, a space odyssey and um, the man on the moon clips, things like that, you know, that seemed to uh, the collective humanity as like the greatest thing at the time. I told my dad, I am going to be a part of something even greater on this earth. And once I started becoming aware of these um, 26,000 year pole shift cycles, already the pole has wandered way off of what it normally is. And we're seeing these earth changes. We're seeing uh, every planet in the solar system heat up, more volcanism. There's changes going on solar system wide. But ever since I started learning about that it has been uh, prophesied that the earth is gonna have this great awakening, then I, I knew I was gonna be a part of it. So I just feel like I'm just doing my part to bring out this information to share with you uh, what, uh, what has worked for me to get these heavy metals out. But I also feel like this is, uh, this is a time of great awakening and transformation. And, if, and I feel like we are gonna stay in our bodies, but that we're going to, um, transform by bi transform biologically I don't think we're just going to like go out of our body and become light beings but I think somehow you know with the infinite intelligence of the creator and the unlocked DNA our incredible uh, brains and um, and our our biology I just feel like we're going to undergo some kind of massive transformation and be able to start to unlock some of the things that the great masters uh, throughout time that uh, have, have been documented, things like levitation, you know, psychic ability. Uh, I feel like the new generation coming in has, 
is already starting to exhibit some of these uh, skills. Um, I know my daughter, I can send her shapes and colors and she 95% of the time she uh, gets it uh, from a, a psychic level. And uh, Nityananda and his uh, following, if you, if you tune in with that, um, this uh, Vedic teacher, this master who said he uh, incarnated um, uh, from the uh, Lemurian times and his discourse is, is initiating people and uh, a lot of children even into awakening their third eye where they get blindfolded and they can see, um, they, can, they can read, you know, and see um, with being absolutely completely blindfolded as well as receive data of distances, of how, f how far it is from here to another city or another planet, pinpoint accuracy with, with distance and stuff like that. So there is no doubt there is untapped potential that we have to uh, look forward to. And um, yes, detoxing and clearing ourselves uh, is definitely helpful. So I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to bringing you more um, good information to help uh, with our awakening. Check out my awakening protocols where we have a pineal awakening protocol that can help to start to awaken your third eye, your inner vision and decalcify the pineal gland. And uh, my cavity healing protocol you can get at medicinal-foods.com. It's a free protocol there that talks about uh, how to combine uh, the, the X factor with the fat soluble vitamins to actually refurbish the enamel on your teeth. Enjoy, and until next time, aloha.